It's just a little donut hole looking thing with some granulated sugar on top. How good could it be? Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I would really appreciate it. So yes, I've been gone from YouTube for another, what, what's it been, three weeks? Uh, of course, you know, I did an entire series of five videos, so that kind of took it out of me. Uh, but yeah, I just needed a little bit of a rest, and uh, I'm glad that this is YouTube thing is just a hobby for me. Um, cause I would kind of suck at rolling in the money with as, uh, infrequent and irregular as I post videos, but, uh, I want my heart to be in as many of these videos as I can. So, uh, and yeah, just last few weekends, I've been a little bit tired, uh, not quite feeling the mood to do a video and, you know, you know, you know, when you're not in the mood to do something, it's not going to turn out right. And, you know, I've just been enjoying, uh, the, some snuggle time with my kitties and, uh, you know, just a couple other little things, not having to worry about a whole lot else, you know, just dealing with, you know, the regular life stuff. Fortunately, no irregular life stuff for right now, but anyway, uh, I could go on and on about that, but let's get to the, the meat and potatoes of today's video. And that, uh, basically at the crux of this video is a question. Hypothetical, although you could, you are welcome to give me an actual answer down in the comments if you want to. How far would you go for free CDs? That's the question. And I don't necessarily mean geographical distance, uh, but I mean, what sort of uh, extremes would you go to uh, in terms of uh, logistically, I guess is the word, or, you know, what would you do uh, in order to get your hands on some free CDs? What would you do for the proverbial Klondike bar in this case? Um, <laughs> I just popped my head. Yeah. Those commercial jingles from all those decades ago are stuck up here. As I've said before, my brain's a scary place. But anyway, uh, so yes, um, uh, several weeks ago, this has actually been, uh, I've had these CDs for a couple months now, and I just uh, was able, unable to get to the necessary steps before this video until just a couple weeks ago. So that's why it's been a while since I've, uh, or I haven't been able to give this to, video to you guys until now. Just wanted to get everything. I had a lot of prep to do. Um, but yes, uh, over at House of Records, uh, the store in Eugene, Oregon, they have what I've mentioned before, their freebie section, uh, the, the freebie shelf right uh, by the door. That's when, you know, when people bring in records or CDs or cassettes or whatever that uh, are just too darn dirty, uh, too messed up, or other or have other flaws that the store is not willing to buy them, uh, and the person is not willing to take them with them and lug them somewhere else, uh, they just stick them on the freebie shelf. And that's where these CDs were. And um, it's they, they belonged on the freebie shelf because I, I just cannot believe that somebody actually brought them in in the condition they were, thinking that the store would actually buy them. And uh, yes, I... Uh, well, to give you an idea of what I had to do to get these CDs at least presentable enough to show in this video, I'm going to give you a little B-roll footage. Okay, I am set up out here in the workshop, as you can see. Got plenty of cleaning supplies with me. Uh, I've got the Windex here that I will use uh, primarily, and disposable latex gloves. I got a whole box of them, in fact. And some paper towels, as well as a uh, an actual cloth rag here. Uh, and I've got a mask, as you can see, um, just in case because I don't know what's on these CD cases. So just in case it reacts with the Windex, I've got something to protect my uh, respiratory system, and then I can switch to the Simple Green if I need to, because that's uh, made of natural products. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Gloves on. Mask on. Mask on properly. As you can see, I've got uh, a my phone here with a tripod, so I can show you the CDs and their condition as I go through them. And uh, yeah, these are not uh, these are really really grimy CDs. I've never seen CDs this grimy before. And I've also got a uh, screwdriver with me because some of these I can't even get open. 
without prying on them, so which really has me kind of uh, concerned. Let's see if I can do this without inflicting damage on the CD. Oh. And I don't know, honestly don't know if any of these are going to be worth salvaging, but just the uh, it's the adventure in it all. In it all is uh, what I'm having fun with. Yeah, this is just really. And it, yeah, this makes me wonder what kind of uh, chemicals these CDs came in contact with if it is practically welding the uh, CD case together. So yes, as you could see in that B-roll footage, these CDs were an absolute mess. Um, well, actually, not so much the CDs themselves as the cases. Uh, you know, some of the cases I'm kind of surprised that I could actually see through the cases. They were so filthy. Uh, you know, see through them to see what the cover art was and see what the albums were. But uh, yes, an absolute mess. Uh, did the precautions, as you could see, the uh, mask and the gloves and all that stuff. Uh, took me quite a while to clean those CDs, uh, a whole afternoon, basically. And uh, actually, most of the discs, uh, about two-thirds, half to two-thirds of the discs, were in decent condition. Some scratches, but uh, they look playable. Uh, and But the, the cases... The inserts were pretty much all water damaged, nearly all of them. Um, yeah, just like if you're looking for keeper copies, uh, <laughs> d d don't count on it because the, the liner notes, some of them you can't even open because they're, you know, you know what happens with CD booklets, booklets when they get waterlogged. They just stick together like glue. You can't open the pages and all that. So uh, for, the, for the inserts, uh, yeah, these CDs are just not, not something that you really want. Uh, but for for the music, uh, I, I thought I'd see you know see what I could find and what's worth keeping and whatnot. And uh, but yes, as you could see, those cases. Uh, getting back to the cases, they were just um, some of them were just absolutely filthy and grimy. Uh, some of them were almost glued together. One of them, in fact, was uh, with whatever that stuff was. It it was apparently just mildew because uh, it didn't put off any noxious. Uh, chemical reactions when I sprayed the Windex on them, so apparently it was just mildew. But uh, there was, I guess, something else in some of these CD cases. One of them was so bad it was actually glued together, as you can see in the in the clips there. I had needed to use a screwdriver to wrench the thing open, and of course that pretty much shattered the uh, the CD case. It was, uh, you know, the CD case was a lost cause on a lot of these, um, and there were others that uh, you know the the hinge parts on the uh, front of the CD case were broken, so naturally, what did they do to uh, make them usable? Duct tape. Of course, why not? But anyway, yes, and I don't know if it uh, pains you as much as it pains me to see, and you will see what good albums were in this collection, that, you know, somebody would treat such good albums like this. Uh, I, I just... I, I just don't know. Of course, maybe it was, I, well, the discs were in pretty rough shape, like, you know, the person just didn't take good care of the discs themselves. But, you know, I would imagine that they were just put in storage. Maybe the original owner of these passed away, and they were just left in storage uh, for years, if not decades, and they suffered water damage and stuff, and uh, that has to have been what happened. Up here in the Northwest, every once in a while, uh, you know, if you live in a certain place and you get enough rain in a rainy season, your basement's going to flood, which I would not be surprised if this is what happened with these. And uh, But yes, I thought I would anyway, I thought I would show you all the things that I uh, got out of here, the stuff that I'm going to salvage, and even the stuff that I'm not going to bother keeping. It's, it's pretty much junk. I don't know if I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to throw them away or if I'm just going to donate them, because I doubt that the thrift stores are going to bother wanting to sell these. The seat, the discs are scratched up enough. And of course, as I said, the inserts badly damaged. But I kind of broke these up into groups. Uh, the first group is, oh, stuff that I already have in one form or another that is not worth keeping for me. Uh, because the ones I have obviously are in much better condition. Uh, Blue Sky Mining by Midnight Oil. And yeah, this one. The disc actually is in not in bad condition. Another Midnight Oil, Earth and Sun and Moon. And this one, I think, yeah, there's some adhesive on the front of the disc. Oh, actually, I think it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this here matches uh, this here. 
So yeah, the, the yeah the CD booklet was actually stuck to the label surface of the, surface of the disc. Disc is not in too bad a shape. It's probably going to be waste too much time showing you the conditions of all these CDs. But anyway, and uh, this one is something that not a lot of people have that I was kind of surprised to see in this um, assortment here. It's an album called The Buffalo Skinners by a Scottish group called Big Country. My brother was actually a huge Big Country fan, and I actually yes I actually have. This CD, it's got, uh, it's got a good song on it, by the way, called oh, We're Not in Kansas. Listen to We're Not in Kansas by Big Country. And I see what I mean by the condition of the cases. I could barely read. I mean, it shows up better because of the light, the camera light. But yeah, in normal light, I can barely read what's on the uh, back label. And, so. and then we have, oh, the Traveling Wil Wilburys. Uh, this is volume three. And yeah, the disc was in, it's in okay condition. Yeah. And uh, Chris Isaac, I'm a pretty uh, decent Chris Isaac fan. I like, I like his first nine albums. And this is uh, yeah, Heart Shaped World. It's a pretty good album. And then Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble uh, in step. I said Double Trouble. No, Double Trouble. Having trouble speaking today, apparently. And then we have Eric Clapton Unplugged. I think this one is not in, the disc is not in great shape. Yeah, it's got some... You probably can't see... Oh, yeah, you can see uh, on this area of the disc right here, it's got some gunk on it that I try to get off. Yeah, even after cleaning the jewel cases of all these, I even went through disc by disc and tried to clean the, each of the discs as best I could. And uh, uh, what what I use for that, uh, in case you don't know, is uh, the laser... Or, the, excuse me, the uh, eyeglass lens cleaner that's in those little spray bottles. That stuff does not harm CDs. That's what I use to clean CDs that might be scuffed or uh, uh, blotted with fingerprints and stuff. That stuff works really well. That stuff and a microfiber cloth works great. And yes, even with all that, uh, I can only do so much with some of the disc. Cloud Nine by George Harrison. Yeah. And again, the uh, <laughs> the inserts, I mean, look at these. They are just... Yeah. You cannot even... Oh, there's one side that I can sort of get open. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, see, it's just... The inserts are absolutely a lost cause. And and even the disc is... Uh, you know, you can see those scuff marks on near the rim of the disc. And yeah. Granted, the uh, label side can have decent amount of, you know, of uh, damage or scuffs and it'll still play. Uh, Genesis, We Can't Dance. Yeah. Not one of their better albums, but still, it's a Genesis album. And uh, the last one uh, in the ones that I have in one form, well, except for a couple others coming up later, uh, Muddy Waters, 20th Century Masters. It's good stuff. I have a more extensive Muddy Waters collection. This, this disc is actually in pretty good shape, so... Uh, yeah, if I don't know if any of my, my viewers might want any of these, maybe we can work out a deal with postage. Who knows? I won't charge you anything for the disc, the CDs themselves, but postage is a little uh, expensive, you know. And then this next group, actually, let me show you these other three first. I have them in a different section, but they go along with the category of stuff I already have. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, I actually have the uh, a two disc set of the Essential Sun singles. But this is just a one-disc set of Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, one of the early Rhino Records titles. And then History, America's Greatest Hits. Uh, I've got a, a more extensive uh, and a, a later uh, Greatest Hits collection. This one has 12, di 12, 12 discs, 12 songs on it. And yeah, this one, disc and the inserts, actually. This is one of the rare instances where the disc and the inserts are in really good shape. This one could be taken to a store and resold, so... I will probably do that. And Traveling Wilburys Volume 1. I'm thinking of uh, Briar. I don't know if you have either uh, this one or America's Greatest Hits. I was thinking of sending these both to you in an upcoming package. If you'd like, let me know. Uh, if you're watching. And this, now this next group is stuff that was just too sh shabby to save. The, both the inserts and the discs 
are just wrecked all the heck. Would be very surprised if any of these played without skipping. Led Zeppelin 4. Doesn't it just make you want to cry, some of these discs? Um, Pink Floyd, Division Bell. Uh, this one is actually a personal favorite of mine, Together Alone by Crowded House. Great album, by the way. Their first four albums are excellent. And then a live album by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Yeah, just, just brings you to tears how people treat their CDs, whether deliberately or by accident. The Beatles, number ones. Yeah. Uh, there's actually There were actually several Genesis CDs in here. This was by far the one in the worst condition, Selling England by the Pound. Yes, sir. I might have the light a little bit too strong. I got a new light, by the way. Um, I will show you. I've got the idea to do a kind of a behind-the-scenes and room tour video coming up soon. And uh, I will uh, yeah, I just have a couple things to do before I do that. But yeah, that'll be coming up, and I'll show you my uh, my setup, my new setup, uh, the filming setup. Um, Jethro Tull, this was. And then a band that I've kind of been wanting to check out, but uh, won't be with this CD, Procol Harum Classics. It's a, a compilation of theirs. Just in really, really, really bad shape, all these, these this uh, batch of CDs here. Social Distortion, yeah, for you punk fans out there. Shed a tear for that one being in really bad shape. And then we have, which one is it? Uh, disc 2 of the White Album by the Beatles. Yeah. I figure I, I it's almost I almost should have some sad violin music playing during this section of the video. And then we have um, Days of Future Past by the Moody Blues. Yeah. Too bad. Don't worry though, there are some uh, keepable keepable, if that's a word, gems that I'm going to hang on to and uh, give a listen to. Packed by the Pretenders. I think this is a live album. I'm not sure. But, uh, and yeah, you can see the, the back cover is shoddy. And then a two-disc set that I was, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted to check these guys out. Spirit, uh, Time Circle. This is their uh, Greatest Hits collection, a two-disc set. Disc, disc two is okay. It's, disc one is just really, really shabby. I think that was right. Well, yeah, disc two is kind of very iffy also, but yeah, disc one is just bad and uh now you can see <laughs> what's left of the uh insert <laughs> that's with like 90 percent of these cds that's the condition the inserts were in seriously yeah disc one is just really really bad you can't really see it in the light can't can't pick up the scratches in the light but yeah really really bad then we're getting to the stuff that I'm not sure if I'll keep or not. Um, and it's uh, they look playable. So we have uh, Back from Rio by Roger McGuinn. And Roxy Music, Avalon. Yes, uh, these from this point on in these discs, and actually a couple of the other ones that I already showed you, I recased them all. Because, so yeah, some of those CD cases had to go just straight in the trash. They were just... I, it's like, yeah, why didn't I keep the duct tape ones, right? Anyway. Uh, and this one, yeah, Neil Young, Crazy Horse, um, Ragged Glory. I have never been able to become a Neil Young fan. Part of it is his voice. His voice is, forgive me, but it's just my personal impression of his voice. It's a little on the whiny side. Just haven't been able to get into him. So, uh, yeah, and this one I think is in pretty good condition, so... Ooh, fair condition. And yeah, you can see... Uh, you can sort of see the water staining on the... Uh, insert, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, and then... Oh, <laughs> this one was... This one kind of hurt. This is... Um, Green River by Cre Creedence Clearwater Revival. This is a 20-bit K2 Super Coating Edition. But uh, yeah... And it was in a slipcase, and the slipcase was just... <laughs> there was almost nothing left of the slipcase. I mean, yeah. Unprotected cardboard. Uh, uh, does not mix well with uh, sitting in water for what looked like uh, years. 
And then we have this one I am not familiar with at all. Uh, Masters of Reality. This is Sunrise on the Suffer Bus. No idea who these guys are. Then uh, this one. Okay, um, I'll take a, take a quick drink first. Because we're about halfway through the lot. I am not a prude by any means. Um, I mean, I will let the F words fly here and there. And, uh, and I also believe strongly in freedom of expression, especially freedom of artistic expression. You know, yay First Amendment. But, uh, yeah, this al album cover really pushes it kind of too far. And uh, since this is a classic album, you probably know which one I'm talking about. So I decided to censor it for this video. Blind Faith. Yeah. Just, yeah, that, that kind of pushed a little far. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, my, my opinion. And you can see the condition of the back insert on this as well. So it's like, yeah, almost half of it, uh, half of the paper stuck to the uh, old jewel case when I took it out. So yeah. that was in bad shape. Uh, Bob Dylan, Modern Times. Now this guy, I have no idea what music they do. Um, I'm thinking it's probably somewhere along the blues. Uh, oh yeah, I would like to tell you about, about this blues recording. It says right there, <laughs> duh. But um, what's interesting is um, these CDs were made, uh, put out by a label located in San Clemente, California, which is where my family owned a beach house. Privileged. Um, when I was growing up, we went there every summer and stayed there. Anyway, um, Robert Lucas is the guy's name. There were two albums by him in this uh, lot. So just because of that San Clemente connection, I thought I would uh, give these guys a try, see what they're, see what they're like. And here's another one that I, I am not familiar with. Maybe somebody out there would be Justin Hayward and John Lodge with their album Blue Jays. It's on an indie label, so maybe you guys haven't heard of it. But this one I'm sure you guys have heard of. El Dorado by Electric Light Orchestra. Yes, this one was... Uh... Yeah, this one's not in too bad a shape. Um, I, I tried this album before, didn't quite get into it, uh, but maybe I'll give it a try again. We have Here we have uh, a Procol Harum album that is uh, not too bad. Prodigal Stranger. Uh, it's in far better shape than their uh, hits collection that was down there. We have... Uh, there was just one, yeah, there's a whole bunch of Genesis in this collection, but there's only one Yes album, uh, Close to the Edge. And yeah, this one was not in very good shape. Um, yeah, it's kind of, this is one of the iffy ones, but you can see on the, maybe you can see on the front of the disc, there's kind of a this halo of scratched, kind of scratchiness. It's about halfway, uh, halfway between the outer rim and the uh, inner hub. You can kind of see it there. Don't know if that's going to interfere with playability or not. So we'll find out. And then I just mentioned Genesis. Here's a few more albums of theirs. Trespass. Or I guess in England it would be Trespass. Uh, Nursery Crime. I'm only familiar with the uh, mid, mid to late 80s pop era of Genesis, so maybe I'll give these a try. Uh, and then And the Word Was. And this is another one where the... Uh, Insert was stuck to the uh, old case. You can see it's uh, peeled off there. <laughs> Still was in bad shape, I'm telling you. And then we have Genesis Live. So, yeah. I will probably, when I can get around to it, <laughs> I'm just adding adding to my CD ba listening backlog, I will give these a try and uh, give them, uh, see what they're like. And then this is a, a local artist or a Portland area artist, or at least the label uh, that these CDs were made on was is located in Portland. Uh, the Galaxy Trio. There were a couple of albums of theirs in there. Never heard of these guys, so uh, I'd give them a shot. Then we're getting to... We're approaching the stuff that um, I think I'm going to give a shot. Uh, well, actually, this, yeah, this whole second half I'm going to give a shot to, but these were actually the CDs that were in the best condition. Uh, we have a classical... Uh, Album here of Prokofiev music. Meh. And then we have uh, Jean-Michel Jarre with his album Rendezvous. He is a, an electronic or new age artist. Thought I'd uh, give a shot to. And here's one that looks interesting. I've never heard of the guy, Sean Phillips. I, say, I assume. Yeah, it's a guy. Uh, as 
can see he's got uh, facial hair. Women don't usually have facial hair. But uh, the song titles here, or at least one of the, oh yeah, a couple of the song titles on this album interest me. She was waiting for her mother at the station in Torino, and you know I love you, baby, but it's getting too heavy to laugh. That's the name of the first track. Oh, sorry about the light there. Yeah, you can see I'm not lying. That's the name of the first track. But uh, then we have uh, a song called Schmaltz Waltz. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, let's see, a song for Sagittarians. So if any of the, anyone out there is a Sagittarius, there's a song for you on this album. So, uh, yes, and another song called Was That. So it'll be interesting to check this out just because of the name of that first track. Whimsic whimsical song titles kind of uh, uh, intrigue me. And then we have a Joe Cocker collection. Actually, I think I have a Joe Cocker either CD or uh, record. Maybe I don't. Maybe I got rid of it, but... Uh, Yes, this is one of a, a greatest hits album. It's got uh, "You Are So Beautiful," and then uh, with a little help from my friends, obviously. So. And then we have the BBC Sessions by Cream. Give that one a shot. And this one, uh, a copy of this was in my sister's collection. I didn't, I wasn't able to uh, latch onto it, but I will give it another try here. The Flying Burrito Brothers. Uh, this is a, a best of called Farther Along. Then we have The Best of Split Ends. Yeah, this is a group that actually, uh, after they broke up, some of the members formed Crowded House. So, uh, because I enjoy Crowded House, I've always wanted to give Split Ends a shot. Then we have, uh, this guy must have been a Monkees fan, possibly, because there are a couple of... Uh, uh, Monkeys member solo albums in here, like uh, Michael Nesmith. This is uh, Tropical Campfires. And as a grammar snob, the fact that Campfires has an apostrophe in it bugs me. Of course, you would think that he would be he would be intelligent enough, or the proofreading people would be intelligent enough to catch it uh, if it wasn't meant to be there. So maybe it's got a different meaning. But, uh, yeah. I'm just rambling on at this point. And we have another Michael Nesmith album. This is apparently has some of his newer stuff on it because it's called The Newer Stuff. <laughs> Michael Nesmith, The Newer Stuff. So uh, yeah, give that one a try. Never been a huge Monkees fan, so I've never really checked out their uh, solo stuff. This one is actually in a digipack, and it was in spotless condition. I don't know if this was a... Uh, it was in such good condition, I'm not sure if it was even part of this lot. If it just lucked out and was above the waterline, I guess, uh, because of the flood. But yes, this is Mickey Dolan's. Uh, Dolan sings Nesmith. So I guess this, this guy must have been a Michael Nesmith fan. So, uh, yeah. And, um, oh, what's his name? Chris Profi. I don't know if you're watching, but uh, yeah, got some monkey solo stuff. Chris Profi is a monkey's fan, so maybe, maybe if I don't care for these, maybe you'll want them. Who knows? This one I'm looking forward to listening to. Uh, haven't actually been able to listen to any of these yet, but uh, a Bird's Live album, live in Stockholm, 1967. And I say it's a live album. I use that term loosely because there are 12 tracks and half of them are introductions. So it's only got six songs on it. But uh, yes, it was uh, it was released on the Swingin' Pig Records label. How about that? Anyway. And then uh, this is a guy I've been wanting to try out his, his stuff. Richard Thompson. Uh, this is uh, The Hand of Kindness. And another one of his, Rumor and Sigh. So I like the cover of this one. It's cool. Then we're getting into some other good stuff here. Yeah. I, I, I saved the really good stuff for the last batch of us. Oh, about a half a dozen left here. Uh, the Best of Humble Pie. Always wanted to give Humble Pie a shot. Then we have The Who, Quadrophenia. Yeah, both discs. And yes, as I said, the inserts are shot to heck, but the discs are in decent condition. So if I listen to any of this stuff and really, really enjoy it, I could always treat these as place keepers until I get a better conditioned copy of this. Stuff. And thankfully, not all of the Beatles that were in this uh, lot were in crappy condition. 
Sergeant Peppers. Decent shape. Uh, and the inserts, I believe, were... Uh, yeah, this is one where the, the booklet is actually... Uh, you can actually open it up and page through it. And so, yeah. Oh, it's a little spot on the CD I didn't notice before. But yeah, not a bad, not in bad shape at all. And a few more here. What do we have? Uh, another Pink Floyd, the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Not in bad shape either. And yet another one. Although I know this one is kind of looked down upon by Pink Floyd fans. I've tried to get into Pink Floyd. Haven't really been able to yet. I've got a couple of their albums on LP that I enjoy, but still kind of yeah, in a, a momentary lapse of reason. Uh, the, the original version. And then the final three in my in this collection, I guess now it's my collection, uh, a two-album set on one CD of Howlin' Wolf. Yeah. I've always wanted to check out Howlin' Wolf's blues stuff. I guess this has his, uh, sol his uh, self-titled album as well as Moanin' in the Moonlight. So, yeah. Could be good. Uh, I guess I might need to turn the light down for future videos. But, uh, yeah, 24 tracks on this one. So, yeah. And then, Morrison Hotel by The Doors. And what did I tell you? Some good stuff in here. Thankfully, a few of them were in good condition. So, yeah, it's going to give that one a try, too. I have The Doors um, compilation, but uh, none of their uh, uh, individual studio albums. So I'll give that one a try. And the final CD, perhaps the one in the best condition. Maybe not quite. Uh, or the one in the best condition, condition of the ones I don't already have. Heathen by David Bowie. Yeah. I don't know why I do this with every uh, CD reveal, but uh, yeah. And uh, David Bowie is also an artist that I'm uh, not the hugest fan of, just have been having trouble getting into him. There's nothing that I necessarily dislike about him. It's just been having trouble getting into him. So, so what do you think of this little pile of CDs? Huh? Not too bad for zero dollars and zero cents. But uh, yes, of course, you know, a third of them close to a half of them maybe are going to go bye-bye right away. Either I already have them in one form or another, or they're just in too crappy a shape, or they're just stuff I'm not interested in. So anyway, uh, but yes, I'm going to, at the risk of uh, adding to my already frighteningly large uh, CD listening backlog, I'm going to have fun going through the ones I decide to uh, keep uh, on, the, on the first the first wave, the first go-round of uh, eliminations, so to speak. Uh, but yet, and I don't think you guys are going to want any of these. They're in kind of lousy shape. But if you do, if you're a glutton for punishment, you know, drop me a line in the uh, comments section. We can connect on social media. I can, you know, give you a quote for postage. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> don't count on. Like I said, all the inserts are bad, bad shape, and uh, the CDs are not much better. But anyway. At the risk of this video getting any longer than it already is, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.